Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's so good to be here. Um, how many of you went fishing yesterday? <laughs> oh, nice Two of us went fishing yesterday. Uh, and you saw my fish. Yeah. <laughs> Would you believe I'm 80, I'm nearly 80 years old, and that's the first fish I ever caught. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and, you got like I even had help catching that fish. Yeah. <laughs> um, my uh, uh, my friend from from China, who started fishing only after he came here about a few months ago. He's fished many times since then. He has a fishing license, and he really knows how to go about it. But he was staying right by me. His English name is Bruce. And Bruce said, Bob, you've got to catch. And he got excited about it. He said, reel it in. Get with it, get with it, get with it. <laughs> and so he came to shore. And, uh, and I still didn't know what to do. So he reaches down and pick, <laughs> gets my line, picks that fish up, and, uh, and he takes care of it. Uh, takes the hook out, you know, and I, I didn't have to do anything. Brought it home, Colleen cleaned it, uh, and I mean, yeah, it's going to be a great fish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, when we think about the Christian life, we often think of two areas. We, th we usually think of the beginning, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We call that conversion. We call that regeneration. We call that the work of God in our lives. And so the, the Christian faith does begin when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now some people will argue, not argue, but, but they'll state a fact. That there are many Christians who really don't know exactly when that happened. Uh, because it was, a, it was over a period of time. Uh, they were maybe raised in a Christian home, and uh, uh, but but they but in their heart they knew they they were Christians. They accepted Christ, were baptized. But probably many of us know when we did accept Jesus uh, as as Lord and Savior. But whether we we remember the exact time, place, and moment <laughs> or not, if we're a Christian, the Holy Spirit has come into our lives. And that's what makes us a follower of Christ. And then, then, and then the end of life. What happens to us if we're, we're a follower of Christ? What happens? Where do we go? We go to heaven. Uh, the new Jerusalem. Uh, we don't know exactly where, but we just know it's going to be with Jesus. And it's going to be good. good. But what we're going to talk about today, and that's actually what the sermon was about uh, even at a manual this morning, was what happens between conversion <laughs> and glorification going to be with God and Christ in heaven. And, and that's such an important aspect of the Christian life. And sometimes we, we, we forget that, although most of our life then, if we come to Christ when we're, like I was, uh, uh, 11 or 12 years of age, and now I'm, what, what did I say I was? Nearly 80? That's a long time. <laughs> uh, what do we do in that meantime? Why is, it, why is our life so meaningful? Uh, uh, some Christians kind of think of, of, of heaven as being uh, once saved, always saved. Uh, I walked to church all, I got baptized, and so I'm going to heaven. Well, that's true if, if, if Jesus Christ truly by His Holy Spirit, reigns in your heart and in life. But, uh, but the Bible wants us to know that that, that that interval is so important, so very, very important of how we live out our life. And this passage from Philippians chapter 2 is very important to help us to see that. So we're going to be kind of looking at this from three, three points. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at salvation itself and the importance of, of salvation and trying to understand that salvation is a process. It, it happens instantaneously when we accept Jesus. No question about that. 
But then there's a process of what we call sanctification. It's a big word meaning to be made holy, uh, to be set apart, uh, to, to seek to live our lives in, 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 the, in the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and, and then we'll look at several passages that, that describe how that life should be lived out. And then, and then thirdly, we're going to look at two men, uh, Timothy and a man named Epaphroditus, who kind of lived that out. And, and Paul calls our, our attention to that. So, uh, looking again at verse, uh, verse 12, uh, Paul says, Therefore, as my dear friends, as you always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Um, Paul is, is, is encouraging the Philippians to obey. To obey Paul? Well, to obey Paul's teachings about Jesus Christ. Uh, but he wanted people to be obedient to the Christ, not to himself personally. But Paul was given a, a, a task, a mission to proclaim the good news. And he proclaimed that in many places where it had never been proclaimed before. So uh, God used him in a very mighty way. But, but Paul wasn't asking people to obey him but to obey his teachings about Jesus. And that's why church is so important. Because you're, you're not going to want to be obedient necessarily to a human being. You're going to be wanting to obey the teachings of Jesus that's being taught and shared and communicated in, in, in sermon form. Um, and, and so he, he says, uh, as you always obey, Paul is commending them. That, that the Philippian church has been a, a strong and, and, and vital church. Not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation in fear and in, in, in trembling. When we think of, of, of salvation, there's so many scriptures that help us to understand that, that so well. Where uh, uh, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, that that is by by faith you've been saved by faith not of yourself but as a gift of God uh, not of works uh, so you cannot uh, boast uh, the the idea that that salvation is a gift from God given to us uh, we cannot earn it <laughs> we don't deserve it but it's a gift and, and we're grateful for it when we realize all that Jesus Christ has done for us on, on, the, on the cross. Uh, we're, we're grateful. Uh, uh, Paul said about uh, Jesus in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that he became sin for us so that we might become right with God. Our, our, our ability to be right with God is entirely based on what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. He made it possible for us to have a right relationship with God. And that right relationship is not going to come by good works. It's not going to come by, by being good, but it's come solely because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Should we be good? Yes. <laughs> should, we, should we love God and should we love others? Of course. But the power to do that comes in the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross for us, which then produces within us what what Paul uh, calls the fruit of the Spirit, uh, where uh, uh, things like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, self-control, are made possible because of the Holy Spirit indwelling us. That's a pretty good indication also if we're truly a Christian. Uh, do we possess these uh, qualities of, of, of the, the fruit of the Spirit in, in our lives? Uh, uh, that's kind of hard to, to judge, isn't it? It's it hard to determine that for ourselves at times. Uh, maybe when we think about our lives, you know, last year about this time, how have my attitudes changed towards a certain individual? Uh, you know, I still feel angry, resentful, or bitter towards that individual? Or am I beginning to understand that person from a different angle, a different viewpoint? 
that God has enabled me to love someone who I did not love as much before. And, and, and joy, do I, do I, am I sustaining joy in my life? In spite of some very difficult experiences, um, uh, maybe a death in the family, or, 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 or difficulty at my job. Uh, we have many uh, areas in our lives where we have complications and difficulties and struggles. But the fruit of the Spirit is such that, that, that even though we struggle sometimes <laughs> with joy or peace, uh, but, but we know that it's, it's there and, and God will help us work through these things so that we recover whatever uh, blessings we feel we're, we're, we're lacking. Uh, this, this, this thought of fear and trembling uh, uh, has caused some people uh, to pause and, and wonder, what does Paul mean uh, by that, that statement? Uh, uh, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We, we know we can't work for our salvation, but we can work out our salvation. And that word simply means to bring to completion, uh, to, to make it sure and positive. And, 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 and so we, we do that with, with a sense of the presence of, of Jesus Christ in our heart and life through, through his, his Holy Spirit. Um, and then it's, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. So as we're, as we're working out our salvation because the Holy Spirit indwells us, we're, we're, we're able to understand that, that we do that because of God at work in us. That we can't work out our salvation, we can't, we can't grow unless God who works in, in us to will and to act according to his good purpose. So the Holy Spirit has a powerful, powerful place in our lives. And, and, and for us to grow and, and, and develop and mature, uh, we have to we, we have to be yielded uh, to, to his spirit. Uh, and then, then Paul goes on to talk about some specific things in our lives as we're growing in Christ that we need to be attuned to. He says, for, for example, first of all, uh, do everything without complaining or arguing. Wow. Uh, are, are you guilty sometimes of complaining? Anyone here? <laughs> I see all those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and arguing? Arguing? Yeah. Um, why? Yeah. Do you think it's possible for any human being to go through many days <laughs> of their life without complaining or arguing about something? Would you believe that Colleen and I sometimes complain? We do, and, and, and argue. Uh, I argue with a greater degree of, of, of volume. <laughs> She's very quiet and reflective, uh, and, and, and her discontent was with me. So, but, but the Bible says, Paul says, do everything, wow, without complaining or arguing. Uh, Boy, when we, we take that absolutely seriously, we realize how undone we are. Mm -hmm. how, how guilty we are mm -hmm. of this. But you know what? God is so patient and so loving. He knows that in our humanity we are going to struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I think what Paul is saying, with the power of the Holy Spirit, do better. You can do better. Because His Spirit worked in us to help us. So I don't know how we do that. You know, uh, uh, Paul says, do not be drunk with wine, but we're in, we're in his ex excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I guess for me, <laughs> if I'm dealing with arguing or complaining, I'm going to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And uh, I want to deal today with my argumentative spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm angry about something. I'm, I'm complaining about something. Something's not going my way. And, and I'm upset about it. <clears throat> Lord, in my own humanity, I'm going to be the same boy. Same guy I was yesterday. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, today, 
I'm going to work with you on this issue. And I think that's what, what we have to do. I think we have to make a conscious effort almost every day to think in terms, Holy Spirit, help me to live the life today that you call me to, to, to live. And then it goes on uh, and says, uh, besides not complaining or arguing, and if you do that, that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation which you shine like stars in the earth. Wow. What do you know, take each one of these verses seriously is amazing, isn't it? That, that, that if, if, uh, if we're moving more and more to uh, uh, a state of peace and joy with Christ, uh, that we become more blameless and more pure. Uh, it, 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 uh, maybe one of the, the thoughts he has here of a purity of, of water. Um, I remember recently, uh, I can't remember where it was, but, but they have discovered that their uh, uh, water right on the hydrant uh, is not pure. It, it has uh, impurities in it. And, uh, and so you can't drink that water. To be able to buy bottled water <laughs> off the shelves, uh, and I think that's 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 the point Paul is making here, that that we want our our lives to be pure, so it so the impurities are not coming out of us, that that we are are able to share with people, love people in a way that Christ would want us uh, to, to 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 love them, but can. Who among us is going to say uh, uh, that, I, that I, I can absolutely become blameless and completely pure? Uh, again, we raise our hand. Probably not. And that's why, that's what, again, where the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us to realize, hey, you're not being pure right now, Bob. You're, uh, you can't say you're blameless. <laughs> you have some responsibility in this, in this situation. In this story, in, in, in your life. And you know what? God is so gracious. He forgives us. Uh, and and, he, and he, he knows we're, we're, we're sinners. He knows that we also have a heart in our working with, with, with Christ and His Holy Spirit to improve, to grow, to develop, to become more mature in, 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 our, in our faith. Uh, it goes on to say uh, uh, that you will shine like stars in the universe. Wow. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever been involved in, in athletics <laughs> very much, but sometimes a coach will, will try to encourage a team by telling them that they could win this game. Uh, work hard. Uh, uh, work as a team. Uh, I have great faith and great confidence in you. Uh, and, and, and I sense here what, what, what Paul is saying to the Christians at Philippi. You know, you live in a very crooked and depraved world. But you can shine like stars in the universe. Your attitude about life can change people's thoughts and, 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 and attitudes. Uh, about themselves and, and, and about the world around them. So it was a, it was a, it was a call uh, to know that, that as, as holy and separated people, although we know we're not <laughs> totally holy and we're not totally separated from the world, but, but that's what we're called here, uh, to, be, um, uh, to be transformed by Christ means we are slowly being changed into the image and likeness of, of Jesus. And, and if we feel like that's happening in our lives, we know that growth is taking place. But sometimes there's two steps up and then one step back, right? Mm -hmm. we, we often struggle with different issues in our lives and struggle. But, but if we think daily, uh, whatever Paul means by shining up stars in the universe, when people around you see ugliness, hatred, uh, bitterness, prejudice, uh, discrimination of all kinds. 
but 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 you have your uh, face on the on the north star, the idea of what God really wants in my life, and and you're and you're devoting daily your life uh, to Christ. Lord, just help me improve some <laughs> today. Help, help me to grow a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that often uh, uh, people ask me, uh, say, Bob, you, you, you know a lot about the Bible. And I feel so, uh, 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 so ashamed because I know so little. When people ask me questions, I don't know what to answer. And you seem to know how to answer. And I say, well, because I'm, I'm old and went to seminary. But, but, but what God wants in your life is not that you know all the answers, but that you're growing. A little bit today, more than yesterday, and every day of your life, your, your, your thought is, how can I do more? How can I improve more? And Lord, thank you for your kindness and your patience when I don't do well. That's really good. <laughs> very important in growth, is that we don't give up on ourselves. And so I, I tell students, I tell people that, that that take each day at a time and, and learn a little bit more. And just another verse or so, another principle from the Bible. And, 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 and know that God is satisfied with that. Because so often Christians go days and days and days and days without any improvement, <laughs> without any desire to grow. But if we have a heart to grow, we will grow because God wants us to do that, and he'll help us. And so we shine like stars in the verse as we hold out the word of life. You know, that may boast in the day of Christ, I did not run or labor for nothing. Paul desperately wanted these, these uh, Philippian Christians to grow and develop and then mature. He gave his life, not only to the church at Philippi, but, but throughout the, the book of Acts, all these churches he went to, you know, the letters he wrote to these churches and to these individuals. Christian grow, Christian grow, Christian grow, 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 become more mature, develop, and, 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 and mature. Um, and, and, and then he says, uh, uh, I, I don't want to think I ever ran or labored for nothing. <laughs> so Paul was being a little bit, a little bit crude there. He said, uh, I want, I want there to be progress in the gospel. I'm not just. I'm just going from one city to another city and just uh, just talking uh, talking away I'm talking about Jesus Christ I'm talking about how to grow in Christ how, how to how to follow in God's love he loves you so much and that he wants you to love others he wants you to, to grow and, 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 and mature and he says, even if I'm poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your, uh, your faith, I can, I'm glad and rejoice with it. Oh, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. We're in this together. Uh, Paul often admitted <laughs> that he was not perfect. He knew he wasn't perfect. When you read like a, a, a section from Romans 7, he says, wow, the things I ought to be doing, I'm not doing. Those things I ought not to do, I'm just, just reversed. He, he's saying, I'm a wicked man. And we, we think of Paul as being probably the greatest follower of Christ that ever lived. He loved Jesus so much. When you read his, his letters, every day of his life, it, it's almost as if he, he got up and said, I love you, I love you, I love you. What can I do, what can I do, what can I do uh, to, to serve you? To bring honor and glory to your name. But even Paul, had weaknesses that he was constantly dealing with. And so he offers us not perfection because <laughs> he knew he was not perfect. But he also knew that Jesus Christ made us capable of doing things we thought impossible before by the power of, the, of, his, of his spirit. Uh, yeah, I, I, last last uh, a week of uh, Saturday, uh, Ming Leong, Colleen, and I uh, took, uh, there were about 50 of us, uh, 44, 45, 46 Chinese, and Colleen and I. We, we like that. That's fun. And we, we went to, uh, 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 to Elk, River, Elk River Falls. And 
probably, uh, I didn't ask me on this, but, but Colin and I were thinking of that, say there were 45 Chinese that were there. Maybe there were two or three more. We were using the word 50 because it sounded more. <laughs> but say there were just 45 there. Uh, of those 45, uh, Colleen and I, Mignon, Shai, maybe some of the boys, um, and uh, at least three or four other Chinese may be Christian. And, I'm, well, I know they are. Well, one's going to be baptized very soon at Emmanuel. Uh, but, but say uh, 35 of the 45 were not believers. And uh, we had a great time. Uh, and we went f fishing. There were <laughs> only 13 of us yesterday. The weather, weather conditions. But, but I was just thinking, these, these 35 Chinese who are not believers yet, some are, are along the way. They're in different stages of being pre-Christians. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, some could care less. They went for the fun. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I, I want to go there. I, I like a hike, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and enjoy that. Um, and, uh, and 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 some may yeah, I, I'm enjoying some Bible study. Uh, I enjoy uh, uh, learning about Jesus. He seemed like a really really good man. Loved people, cared for people. And the Bible says he loves me. Uh, and, and, and some may be at the point where they're about to make a decision for Christ. So we had all these different, uh, different types of, of, of belief systems working. But I'm just thinking how difficult, how difficult the culture that they come from and they may go back to is going to be for them. I've been reading recently that the, uh, the communist government of, of China his, his key leaders are talking a lot about patriotism. But their patriotism that they're talking about is much different than what Americans talk about patriotism. Yeah, I know uh, President Trump has been talking about patriotism is, is what leads us to the flag, right? <laughs> well, uh, he got a little bit, I think, overboard on that because cause patriotism is not just determined by the flag, but determined by your, your love of a country. And, and your care for, 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 for your, your country. But we also know as, as Christians in America that more important than patriotism to this country is our loyalty to Jesus Christ, right? We know that. That, 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 that God and country are important, but God is up here. <laughs> country is down here. <laughs> but, but, in, but in China, uh, the, the persuasive argument is this. That if you're going to be patriotic, you're going to accept the party as your boss. They are the leaders. They know what's best for you. Um, it's best if you don't have any belief in God. Atheism is, 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 a, is a more appropriate way for Chinese to be patriotic. Uh, Karl Marx is our leader. Karl Marx said, religion is the opiate to the people. It deadens your senses. It keeps you from being a good scientist. It, it, it's, it's like a crutch you need to get on with life. And so I was just thinking about that. that how, do, how do we, as Christians, in Grace and Hope and, and the Moscow Pullman Chinese Church, um, relate to these understandings that are happening more and more strongly uh, than they had in many years? Uh, maybe going back to, uh, uh, to some of the really difficult days in, in Chinese history in this century, in the last century. But, but, but how, do we, how do we give encouragement to Chinese who do become Christians and go back to China with this kind of atmosphere? Uh, we know that God's going to take care of them. We know there are strong, strong Christians there, right? In fact, some of the strongest Christians in the world are in China. But, 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 but how do they latch on to these people that can really help them? Uh, at least in, in our country, not everybody's a Christian, right? <laughs> well, of course not. Uh, 
but but there is a, a an atmosphere where most people can feel genuinely um, content about being a Christian without having to be concerned about how do other people in my country see me if I'm not being patriotic in the ways they understand uh, patriotism. But I've given a lot of thought to that. Maybe we all can think more about that. And, and being concerned for people from other cultures. Uh, while they're here, uh, it's exciting because they're involved and they're interested. Uh, Bible studies and, 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 and prayer meetings. And some come to Christ. And some, it sticks. It's really strong. It's, it's, it's truly uh, followers of, of Christ. Well, yeah. just, just a thought. And, and thinking about Christian growth, how difficult it can be for Chinese Christians to grow in China without a lot of help uh, from, from brothers and sisters there and, and uh, people who could help them work through all of this because uh, it may mean uh, loss of job, um, uh, devotions, and, and, and so forth for, for some, some Christians in, in, in China. And my heart just goes out to them, and I know it does uh, for you as well. Uh, how do we help Chinese Christians here, particularly if they're going back to China, uh, without, without coming down heavy on, on the Chinese government? Because that's not helpful either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 we don't want to be talking about atheistic and, and uh, terrible things that are happening in, in China. Uh, that's just not very, very good uh, uh, for us to have that kind of attitude. Uh, but, but to be able to commend uh, China where it can, should be commended and, uh, and to think highly of the, of the Chinese people, uh, it's just very, very important. Uh, and then, uh, very briefly, I'm going to talk about these, these two, uh, two men, uh, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Remarkable men, and, and Paul spends quite a bit of time here in chapter 3 uh, talking about these, these, these two men. And they're kind of examples of what we're talking about. Uh, men who have stood the test of time, served the Lord effectively, and Paul is full of commendation for them. Why? Because they were faithful. Over a long period of time, they persevered in their Christian faith through difficulties and struggles and trials. He begins with Timothy. He says, I was cheered <laughs> when I received news about you. Because Timothy, uh, who, who, who I love very much, uh, he's taken a great interest in your welfare. So Paul loved anyone that took a genuine interest in the Christian growth of people everywhere. And he had many people like Timothy and Titus, and Epaphroditus, and Barnabas, and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Silas, and many, many others that Paul refers to. And he was always saying, keep, keep sharing, keep telling the story, keep having people grow in, in, in Jesus. And, and Timothy had been doing the same thing uh, uh, there as well. And he says, well, you know, Timothy has, has proved himself. Wow, that's a beautiful thought. Um, for someone to, to prove himself or herself means that they have gone through difficulties, stress, struggles. And, uh, 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 and, and they, have, they have demonstrated consistency in their, in their life. Uh, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Uh, that's a wonderful experience to have. Uh, I'm old enough to have had many younger men and women in my life that I've tried to help and encourage. And uh, there's nothing more exciting, nothing more joyous in seeing a person progress in the gospel. To see them growing uh, very uh, obviously in, in their faith. Uh, they're, they're sharing the good news with people. They love to read the Bible. They love to pray. And they love to encourage others to do the same. And so Paul says, I hope to send Timothy to you again as soon as I see how things are with me. And I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Uh, so uh, Timothy was a young man he had met uh, in Lystria uh, in, in uh, 
his letter to Timothy, he talks about Timothy's mother, uh, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, had been women of great faith. The uh, dad and granddad are not mentioned, so we don't know if, if, if they were a follower of Christ or not. I, I think not. But uh, the, uh, so he, he came from a good family. And, uh, and, and God used Eunice and Lois in his life in, in a beautiful way. Those of you who, who come from uh, homes where your parents, your grandparents, were Christians are so fortunate for that. Um, my mother was, was a follower of Christ. She didn't study very much, and she didn't have a great knowledge of Scripture. But the one thing she did, she knew the value of me going to church. And it was more important for me to be there than, than I think for, for my mother. My dad didn't become a Christian until much later. So I did not have him as a Christian father. I lived later, and we, we, we rejoiced in that. But, but you are, are men and women who do have families here, and, uh, and you have influence in their lives. And what a great influence that, that can be uh, to influence... Uh, your, your children, your grandchildren, towards faith in Christ, to see them grow, to see them develop, and, and rejoice in that. Um, then Epaphroditus, uh, a very uh, interesting man. We, we learned from chapter uh, uh, 4 uh, that uh, Epaphroditus had, had come to uh, Rome, where Paul was in prison, or under house arrest, from Philippi, he came bringing gifts, letters, uh, maybe even some special food from, from the Philippian area. Um, and, uh, and, and Paul was very, very grateful for that. Um, and, and now uh, um, Paul is talking about what's happened with Epaphroditus. It's kind of a, a very difficult time in, in Paul's life because of, uh, he, of his relationship with Epaphroditus and his gratitude towards the church back in Philippi that had sent him there to be their Paul's personal minister. Like it was saying, whatever Paul needs, you do it. We love this man so much. He, he, he helped start our church. He was the one who baptized Lydia. He baptized the Philippian jailer and his families. Uh, and, and now we have an opportunity to pay him back Love for love that he gave to us. So it's kind of, the, kind of I think, while he was there for do anything Paul needed uh, in terms of ministry. So he says, I, it's necessary for me to send back to you, Epaphroditus, my brother. But notice what he, what, he, what he says about it. My fellow worker and fellow soldier. <laughs> uh, a, a man who's gone through the battles with me. We've been on the, 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 the front lines here uh, in, in Rome, in, like we were in Philippi. You remember, I was thrown in jail for just preaching the gospel. We know how hard it is. And somewhere along the line, uh, Epaphroditus became a follower of Christ there in Philippi. And he it says, uh, he's also your messenger whom you sent to take care of my needs. So he's very much aware of, of the mission that Epaphroditus had. You, you're here to take care of me. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Philippian church. I'm grateful for that. However, he says, for he longs for all of you and is distressed. Distressed. That's a pretty deep emotional word, to be distressed. When you're, you're distressed, you're feeling very uncomfortable. You're feeling pain. Uh, you're feeling uneasy. Uh, you, you're feeling scared about certain things in, in your life because you heard he was ill. Now, how much they knew about this before Paul writes this letter, that the cover does takes back there, we don't know for sure. But he said, uh, indeed, he was ill and almost died. Wow. In this really tense situation, he almost died while he was here. Can you get the, the picture? He was here for you, 
And while he was here, he became sick with a very, very serious illness. And he almost died. You, you hear the, 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 the drama in, 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 in Paul's uh, uh, words here. Uh, and uh, he says, but God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. You know, that's one thing. Sometimes Paul gets bad press because he seems to be so cerebral. He only talks from his head. When you read books like Galatians and Ephesians and Romans, you see this great mind <laughs> at work uh, sharing and communicating the gospel that's rich <coughs> and deep and profound. Uh, but, but here, and in places like 2 Corinthians, you see the emotional side of Paul. And that's good to see, because some people think he's only, I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ, and that's it. <laughs> you know, I'm, going to give you, I'm going to give you the low head, and you just, you just learn it, and, 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 and take it. But he says, no, I, would, I felt great sorrow. I was extremely anxious that he could have died while here in Rome. So God spared not only him, but me sorrow upon sorrow. And he says, therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him back to you, so when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. I, I don't want him off my hands, so I, I just want him back at home. And, and once he's there, and I know he's He's getting better. He's recovering from this illness that he almost died from. I mean, his death was imminent. But God saved him. And, and, uh, and so you should welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor men like him because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. He wasn't being angry with Philippians. He was saying, it, it just happened that way. I am so grateful that you sent him here. Uh, I was saddened by his near death. Uh, but uh, I hope you realize, Philippians, that he risked his life. Because Paul was in, in, in jail in, in Rome um, because he was preaching the gospel. He went, his house arrest, read more about that in Acts 28, wasn't severe like it was later. When you read Timothy, he was under severe persecution there. But here, he was under house arrest. He had some people that could come in and, and visit with him and, and things of that nature. And, uh, but, but Epaphroditus still was, it, it says, risking his physical life from illness, but also his own life because of his relationship with Paul. When, 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 when you stand with someone who's in a risky, political, spiritual position, and people hate him, <laughs> You, alongside that person, also can face consequences, like many of our brothers and sisters in China do today, and in, and in, uh, um, and in other places, like uh, Syria, uh, like Iran, like Iraq, and so forth. Um, and, and so he, he says, welcome him in the world with great joy. Have a big celebration. Honor this man. For, for all that, that he's done. So Timothy and, and, and Epaphroditus are, are examples of men who were sanctified through, through, through his, their relationship with Jesus Christ and lived their life out uh, with, uh, with great uh, wisdom and courage and strength and power. And uh, uh, so that was a, a great way. So uh, some people have, have said salvation is it just one thing? It's actually three. <laughs> it, it starts with regeneration, conversion, where a person accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Salvation begins right there, bang, and and it, it remains secure throughout your entire life, um, as long as it's genuine to begin with. <laughs> uh, genuine commitment of their life to Christ brings about the the Holy Spirit entering a person's life. And they are followers of Christ. And then we want them to live that way. Uh, and grow. And 
because they're, they're a little baby in Christ when they come, come to know Jesus. And we want them to develop and mature and, 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 and study and learn great things, love and, and honor Christ in every way possible. We call that sanctification. They're made holy. Are they holy because they're holy? No, they're holy because of what Jesus did for them on the cross. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and they have a kind of separated life. Not that they're holy, holier than, than other people, or holier than thou, uh, or, or arrogant, but, but they, they know that how they ought to live their lives with uh, moral and ethical principles based on the Holy Scripture. And so they want to live the rest of their life like that, serve Christ in every way, daily, 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 and then finally we have the glorification. The, the, the end of, of the process of, of salvation is heaven, uh, where we, we, we rejoice uh, in heaven with, with Christ uh, over all the others that have served him in the past, present, or future. <laughs> so, uh, sanctification is, a, is something I want us to, to really think about today and, and uh, say, how, what do I need to do in my own life to grow closer to the Lord? What are weaknesses in my life now I need to deal with? That the Holy Spirit is calling me to deal with and, and to consider. And so in so doing uh, that, uh, you will apply Holy Scripture to your life, wherever you are. Uh, some of you are further along <laughs> in the Christian life. You know more. You experience more. Uh, and you have more responsibility <laughs> than others who are, who are on the beginning level. That's why discipleship is so very important for there to be uh, sanctification. People have to help other people grow in Christ. Let's pray again. Lord, we do thank you for uh, this day. We thank you for this powerful passage from Philippians 2 that helps us to see the importance of salvation and then the importance of how salvation uh, uh, molds our lives into the pattern of Jesus Christ, where we love him more and more daily and where we love other people more and more daily because of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Thank you for that. Help us, Lord, to do inventory in our own lives, to, to see what's keeping us from becoming the person that you intend for us to be, uh, that we might glorify and honor you even more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.